Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, try to keep this quick to make up some time. Uh, my name is Sky, and I work on the JAX team. And today I'm going to talk about uh, two new APIs in JAX that are designed to give developers lower level control of the hardware they're running on. Um, so before diving into the low level control, though, uh, let's start with a very quick overview of JAX, just in case anyone hasn't seen a JAX talk in the past like five or six years. Um, so really quick, JAX is a Python library for high performance machine learning and numerical computing in general. Um, it provides a NumPy API, as well as various composable function transformations, including automatic differentiation. Uh, and by default, it runs everything on a hardware accelerator like GPU or TPU uh, via a compiler, which is usually XLA. Uh, we believe JAX's compiler-centric approach, as well as its native parallelism features, make it a particularly good fit for running applications at scale. Um, so here is a toy example of some JAX code. Um, this example illustrates JAX's main design idea which is to write some NumPy functions uh, and then apply the composable function transformations, which you can see highlighted in colors. Um, and these do things like auto diff, batching, optimized compilation, uh, and much more. And one more bit of background before we really dive in um, is that um, you can use JIT not only to compile for a single device, uh, to make your computation go faster, but you can also use JIT to automatically parallelize over multiple devices uh, using XLA's GSPMD feature. Uh, so some of you may already be familiar with this functionality, but under the PJIT API, we basically realized that there's no need for a separate API and you can just use JIT. Uh, so by placing data with sharded layouts and passing those to a JITed function, everything inside that function, including your JAX NumPy calls and other function transformations gets auto parallelized by the compiler. Um, this includes automatically inserting cross device communication collectives as needed um, and attemp attempting to pick efficient intermediate uh, data shardings to avoid unnecessary communication. Um, so, as you can kind of see in the slide, uh, JAX applies JIT automatically to the MapMall operator. Uh, so, we automatically get optimized multi device MapMalls. Uh, just by passing in sharded data. Um, sorry, one second. Um, so this is really cool because it lets you take a single function and run it in a variety of configurations up to huge scale. Um, and it also provides a unified model for data parallelism, model, pipeline, spatial, basically any kind of parallelism uh, can be expressed with the same JIT and sharded APIs. Um, so there's a lot to say about this, but it's not actually the topic of the talk today. Um, so if you'd like to learn more, you can check out our uh, docs page. We have a distributed arrays tutorial, or we talked more about this in our GTC talk, I believe in September. Okay, so what are we actually talking about today? Um, everything we've seen so far has been very declarative. You write a NumPy function, uh, JAX and XLA take care of the rest. Uh, this has worked really well so far uh, and is still a great option for many use cases, uh, but sometimes for really specific and performance critical functions, uh, power users may want more control over what's executed on the hardware. For example, JAX users have recently been experimenting with different variants of flash attention and its gradient, and it may not be practical in all cases for the compiler to pattern match that kernel in order to emit optical code, uh, optimal code. Uh, and it can also be hard for the compiler to decide how much numerical instability is like okay to insert for this application. Um, so in these cases, uh, while compilers like XLA are amazing for providing impressive out of the box performance across a wide range of applications, you occasionally need an escape hatch. Um, and that's why we'd like to give JAX users more control when they want it in an easy to use way. Um, that also works well with existing JAX functionality so you can drop into these lower level interfaces when it makes sense, but without having to give up all of JAX's and XLA's other great features. Okay, so there's two JAX APIs that I'm going to highlight today. Um, the first is shard map. 
which is the successor to PMAP, if you've heard of PMAP, um, and allows for per device programming instead of relying on the compiler to shard the computation for you and insert communication primitives for you. Um, the second API I'm gonna talk about today is Palace, which is a new kernel authoring API integrated with JAX that offers even lower level control uh, that mostly bypasses the compiler altogether. So let's get started with shard map. Shard map, AKA map, which is a lot more fun to say, <laughs> um, is the successor to PMAP, like I mentioned. Uh, so it gives you a slightly more advanced way to write a single function that is then invoked on multiple devices or accelerators. Uh, with each device receiving a different shard of the input data, like in the picture. Um, so basically a souped up parallel map. Uh, so here uh, we're gonna have an example of shard map. I'm not gonna get too much into the details of this example. It's actually like a little bit complicated in order just to show you what is possible with shard map, especially compared to PMAP. Um, so unlike PMAP, shard map lets you express multiple axes of parallelism at the same time. Um, so you can see at the top here, first we define uh, a mesh, which is two dimensional in this example. Um, and then moving down to the shard map, we also specify how the output is sharded, or sorry, we first we specify how the input is sharded um, via the inspects argument on the slide which tells Jax what to do with the inputs when we call this schmapped function, like how to chop up these two X and Y inputs and put them across devices. Um, we also specify how the output is sharded. Um, so this is necessary, even though uh, kind of like the per device shape is gonna be specified by the shard map body itself. Um, but Jack, this is only the per device shape and Jax won't know how to reassemble those per device data shards into a single logical multi-device array. Uh, so the outspec basically tells Jax how to interpret the output shards as a single logical array. Uh, this is an important feature to make the output of shard map ready to be used as a regular multi-device uh, Jax array function and to embed shard map inside larger digit computations, which we'll see in a second. Um, so like, like PMAP, once you're inside the shmap function body, everything is from the perspective of a single device. Uh, so that means that all the values have per device shapes, like you can see in the comment, um, and that we directly express any cross device communication collectives and which mesh axes they should operate across. Um, Shard map has another, uh, a few other nice properties, including the ability to run in a distributed op by op or eager mode. Uh, this is actually the default mode. Uh, if the shard map function itself isn't jitted, uh, it runs like regular Python code, roughly one operation at a time, meaning the free to set breakpoints, uh, print values, things you would do in regular NumPy code. The only difference is that all the operations are actually running across multiple accelerators. And like I mentioned earlier, shard map also composes nicely with JIT. So this not only lets us switch between the op by op mode and fully compiled code, um, it also lets us switch between manually sharded code inside the shard map and automatically sharded code um, that's, you know, uses GSP of D inside the JIT body. Uh, so you can see at the bottom of the slide, first we'll call our manually sharded map mall, um, and then we'll let the compiler take care of the transpose inside. Okay, so that's actually it for shard map. Um, if you wanna learn more, we're gonna have a breakout session. Uh, the next API I'm gonna focus on is for when you need even lower level control in the form of custom kernels to run on the accelerator. So Jax actually has two APIs for this. The first is Triton call, which predictably lets you call Triton code from within Jax. The second is palace code, palace call. So Palace is a new system for expressing both GPU and TPU kernels using Jax code directly. Um, we on the Jax team recommend using Palace for a few reasons that I'll get to in a few minutes. Uh, and it's what I'll focus on for the rest of this talk. So let's, um, before getting into why you should use Palace, let's actually look at what Palace looks like. Um, we'll look at a very simple example for how to write a basic palace kernel that just adds two arrays together element wise. Um, so first we write the kernel itself at the top here, add kernel. Um, 
So unlike regular Jax function, uh, sorry, unlike regular Jax functions that take Jax array values as input, palace kernels take shaped references or refs. So refs uh, roughly represent buffers in accelerator memory that must be loaded before we can actually run computations on them. Um, you'll note that in uh, instead of having a return value in this kernel, we have an output ref. So unlike Jax arrays, refs support mutation, which if you've used Jax before is like kind of a big deal. Um, the overall idea of refs is to give us fine grain control over the memory accesses in the kernel, which is kind of a more inherently stateful thing. Um, so in this example, uh, once we're inside the kernel, we're first going to load those uh, X and Y refs and get the actual values we can use. We load them using regular NumPy indexing. So in this case, we're just going to load the entire X and Y values. Um, we can then use regular JAX NumPy operations on the loaded values. Um, in this case, it's just a simple add, but you can go crazy here, uh, including using VMAP and JVP. Uh, we then store the result in the output ref, again, using NumPy indexing, indicating uh, where in the buffer the value should be written to. So we're now ready to call our kernel. Um, we use palace call to turn the kernel into a JAX function that we can pass regular JAX arrays to and get regular JAX arrays out of. And then we simply call it like a regular function. So now I wanna go into a more realistic example using palace. Um, this will also introduce us to some new palace concepts of grids and block specs. And uh, these will allow Palace to automatically pipeline memory access on TPU and run the kernel across multiple threads in parallel on GPU. Um, so our more realistic example is, uh, again, going to be a map mall. And the key thing we're going to utilize is the fact that uh, matrix multiplication can be implemented recursively. So our hardware is usually capable of some sort of smaller map mall. Uh, whether it be 16 by 16 on GPU or 128 by 128 on TPU. Uh, and if we can somehow break down the bigger map mall into these smaller ones, then we can have the kernel just be responsible for doing the small one and kind of compose them together into the big map mall that we're actually interested in. Um, so the way we do that is by providing Palace uh, three distinct pieces of information. The first is what we call the grid. And so the idea with the grid is that we're going to be executing the kernel many, many times. Uh, and the grid specifies how many times we execute the kernel and also provides us a way of identifying which particular instance of the kernel we're executing. Uh, so in this case, we have a 2D grid on GPU. Each of these grid elements will correspond to different threads of execution that can run in parallel. Uh, whereas on TPU, we'll loop over them sequentially and pipeline across the iterations. The second piece of information uh, is essentially the other part of the recursion, which is how do we break down our input and outputs into smaller components that can then be operated on by the kernel. And that's uh, what we call the block shape. So for each of the inputs and outputs, we specify a same rank block shape and Palace will automatically carve up your arrays into blocks of those shapes. Uh, so you can see for uh, X, we've sort of carved it up into row blocks. For Y, we've carved it up into multiple uh, column blocks. And for Z, we've carved it up into little rectangular blocks. And finally, to combine all the information thus far, the final thing we provide is the index map. And the index map says, for a particular instance of the kernel in the grid, which blocks it should have as inputs and which uh, blocks it should write to for output. So in this case, we're kind of picking the corresponding row and column blocks uh, for the kernel you can see in the picture, and then going to write that to the corresponding point in Z, the output. Um, uh, so we'll basically have each uh, kernel operating, computing one little block of the Z output, and then reusing the corresponding X and Y row blocks as needed. Oh, so yeah, that is it for this example. And yeah, again, we're going to have a palace deep dive during the breakout session. So if you want to learn more, do come to that. Uh, so going back to why we on the JAX team think palace is a good idea. Um, 
at a high level, sometimes you have an optimization in mind that the compiler doesn't know about yet, or you might be trying to express something low, low level enough that you can't even directly capture it via the compiler IR at all, so you can't express it. Um, and then it's usually just easiest to write a kernel. Um, why we think Palace in particular is great for kernel authorship in JAX. Um, first, it supports both GPU and TPU. Uh, for GPU, we actually uh, lower to the Triton IR. Uh, and for TPU, we lower to a new MLIR dialect called Mosaic, which also has a mini compiler uh, to lower to TPU machine code that reuses some parts of XLA. Um, one cool feature of the Mosaic compiler integration is that because it reuses XLA, it can sometimes fuse uh, like regular JIDID code with your custom kernel code. So I personally think this is like a super cool feature. It should also be theoretically possible on GPU, just no one has implemented it yet. Um, another uh, great feature of Palace is that you don't have to learn too many new APIs and can use regular JAX NumPy code to author the kernels. Um, and we're also working on adding function transformation support for both inside and outside the kernels with VMAP and JVP, JVP already being supported. Um, there's an eager, emu eager emulation mode using regular XLA HLO that you can use for debugging. Um, the grid and block spec APIs allow for automatic advanced memory pipelining and scheduling, like I mentioned. Um, and finally, one last feature that, again, I'm personally super excited about is that on TPU, you can issue remote direct memory accesses or DMAs, uh, which is how TPU chips communicate with each other over ICI. So this uh, lets you implement custom collective kernels with low level control of the sends and receives that operate over ICI. Okay, that's it. Um, maybe we have a time for a few questions, yeah. but uh, this was kind of a whirlwind. Hopefully you have a high level idea of how and why to use these APIs, but if you're interested to learn more, again, we have a deep dive. We would love to discuss these in detail or JAX in general. Um, and also we're gonna have a special guest, my colleague, Sharad Vikram, who is gonna actually go into an even deeper dive on Palace. Thank you. Awesome. We're gonna try to keep it to one question just to move things along. Um, and then if you have questions, obviously you can join the breakout session, so. Hi. Uh, so um, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, is there a salient uh, progr uh, program model difference between Palace and Triton? Uh, and oh. relatedly, uh, do you have like auto-tuning uh, and any auto-tuning support, like, you know, to control the block, block sizes and so on? Um, we don't have auto-tuning support. That's something you can maybe build on top of yeah. Palace. Right now, you sort of have to bake it in. Um, with uh, respect to Triton, uh, I think the main difference is Palace is slightly higher level when it comes to the memory accesses. Like instead of kind of like doing buff buffer arithmetic, especially with the block specs, block specs you can say upfront mm -hmm. what memory you're going to use, and this allows for better like automatic scheduling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks.